In the past, our role as men was pretty well defined. The man was to go to work, make money for the family, come back home all tired, drink his beer and go to sleep. Some version of that. Not a really exciting role, but that was the role that men had for several decades. And then that role changed. In 1950, the workforce was only 30% or so female. In 2016, the last data that, that I read, the workforce were over 50% female. And that really meant that a lot of men and women are sharing responsibilities very differently than the past generation, just the previous generation. And because of that, we need to learn as men on what does that mean for us. And we don't have past examples most of the time. We need to be coached around what the society is evolving into because this role will change in the next five or 10 or 15 years. Now, we are also co-parenting. We are also finding a new way to be in a relationship. We are also finding how we are led by women versus being leading women and so forth. Men have to be trained, have to learn, have to be coached to be in this new society and to evolve into this new role. You see, change needs coaching. It wants coaching. It requires coaching. If we belittle it, if we discount it, if we don't appreciate it, if we make it as something only weak people do, we are going to take away the speed that it can provide to society to evolve to the next level. You see, this is one segment of society that because of their past programming, because what we've been told when we were growing up, we will find it harder to accept that we need help, that we need support, that we need coaching. This is why it's so important for us to understand why men need coaching right now. The first reason is think about the role reversal that has happened in parenting. So I'm a new parent. I have a three-year-old and I have a year-old daughter, right? And my role as a parent is something that is completely different to what my parents had. I grew up in India. My parents were a very traditional family. My mom was a homemaker. My dad went and had a business. Most of my life, what I saw as parents' role was mom takes care of pretty much everything and dad comes in when once in a while dad is needed for maybe some homework stuff or once in a while advice or education that, that may need to be shared with, with your kid. And that was pretty much the role of a mother and a father was. Now I've heard some version of this story in every society where either the father was mostly absent or the father was only available between like two or three hours in the day and that was their job. They would come after the kids were already gone to sleep and so on and so forth. So mostly what we grew up, at least my generation grew up watching was fathers are not really involved in many things and don't need to do many things. And mothers are mostly the carriers of family and creators of culture and capabilities and so on and so forth. But does that sound like today's society at all? Not at all, and rightly so. I'm a 50% parent, which means 50% of the time, I'm the parent, 50% of the time, my wife's the parent, and most of the time, we're collaboratively parents, which means we, are have, we have the same frontier, we have the same beliefs, we agree to what, how we wanna raise our children, and we try to remind each other that this is our agreement so we can raise our kids in a way that feels congruent to both of us. It's a partnership, it's not, you do parenting and I'm gonna do work. It's very different to how I grew up or I saw as an example or what my guidance can be if my guidance was mostly reliant on what my dad told me, right? There is no way for me to really adapt to the new culture based on what happened in the past or what easy access I have through my father on what fatherhood is. I need to learn and I need to evolve. And if I don't adapt to that change, I will always be in a battle. I'll always be in a conflict, not just with my partner, but with myself. And so if I don't educate myself, if I don't get myself a coach so I can learn and evolve through a dialogue that I get to have, a, have with a coach so I can find what parenting for me as a man looks like in the coming several decades. And parenting is just a part of it. What does it mean to be a man? Remember, in the past, being a man was all about going, working out like crazy, rah-rah, beating your chest, and having your testosterone really fill up your system so you could go out in the world and prove your dominance to the, to world. the world. And that's what being a man was. Being a man was about being the alpha, and that's why we talked about being the alpha man all the time. Now, is that what being a man is? Is that what is attractive to a lot of females? 87% of women said vulnerability makes a man attractive. But what does that mean? 
What does that mean to be vulnerable? And how does a man bring about that vulnerability without sacrificing their own confidence, their own manliness, if I may, that helps a woman see structure, see container? Because that's what a man brings to a woman's life. They are somebody that can hold them really tight when there is an emotional circumstance, an emotional change in a woman's life. So what does being a man look like? in this modern society. I'm not saying what is right, what is wrong, because that is for us to discover as society together, but that is why it's so important for us to ask these questions, to wonder about these questions. And what better way to ask these questions or wonder about these questions than to be coached? Because coaching is about having that conversation. Coaching is about discovery. And that is that discovery that we need to have as men And we need that support of coaches so we can discover what does being a man mean to me? What does being a man mean to this society? Is it the same path that we had in the past and we just have to rediscover it? Or there's a whole new definition waiting for us of what a man is, what a man can be, what a man should be or could be. And that really inspires and encourages us to lean into coaching. And then there's the tricky part. You see, Our past generation was a very patriarchal society. It still is to a great extent. But the generation that is, my generation, the generation that is coming, doesn't really believe in the same structures of society. They don't believe in the man needs to be the leader. They don't believe that we don't, shouldn't have equal rights or the woman shouldn't have rights and so forth. Most of the society doesn't believe that. We are, still have that baggage, that baggage that tells us that we are a patriarchal society, even if most men don't want to live that way. But there's only that much they can change at any given time. So we are living in this transition mode where we are moving from patriarchal society to a more balanced society. But we carry the baggage of a patriarchal society, which invites a transitionary conversation between the modern society, the current society, and the past society. It requires a conversation between male and female of the modern times on what they understand the next society is going to be and how we're going to create a more equal, more balanced society. So it's a very delicate topic and it's a very interesting topic that we must discover or diagnose so we don't carry on the trauma of the past into the future society, into the future of men, into the future of women even. Which brings me to a very key thing that has changed in our day-to-day work. We've gone from a competitive society to a collaborative society. Workplace has gone from competitive to collaborative. The more competitive the workplace, the less likely it is to be successful. The more collaborative the workspace, the more likely it is to be successful. All the data reveals that. The challenge is that men usually are wired for competition. And not because of any other thing, but because of how society perceives us and how we are trained as men. We are told to watch sports and you see competition all the time in sports. You don't see collaboration. You don't see as much of people really working with each other trying to find the answer to a challenge. And because of that, It becomes really individualistic and really competitive. And men become really individualistic and very competitive. And because of that, they start to lose positions that are of leadership within the organization, which will bring about a really interesting challenge. You see, if men want to stay in leadership, in partnership with females and and, and other genders in, in the same level and create an equal society, we need to learn how to collaborate instead of compete all the time. And if that is the case, We need coaching. We need to change our leadership style so we can be adaptive to the new version of society. So it's a big change in how we function in a workplace fundamentally for us to be able to find that new voice, to be able to collaborate, to be able to create results in the way we need to create results. Now that brings me, how do we really start working with men? Because they're fighting a big resistance. Like I said, they they feel like they can't reach out, they can't talk about their pains and their challenges and so forth. And so it becomes an interesting place for us to rediscover how to really even invite this conversation. Well, the best way to start a coaching conversation with a man is to start where they are at. Start the conversation with the pain that they may be currently experiencing. This pain may be related to parenting, relationship, leadership, just performance. Wherever the conversation starts, that's a good place for us to start the conversation. But then be ready to evolve the conversation to a place where they are now listening into a deeper challenge that they may be facing because of which that surface level challenge seems to create pain for them. The four key elements to coach anyone and create massive results. It's my own methodology and you can learn it in this video. See you there.